Good morning. And isn't it wonderful to see so many faces in St. Mary's again? Whee! Good morning to those of you that are online. I have an apology for you before we start. One from last week and one from this week. Um, last week, unfortunately, the battery ran out. Um, but the Holy Spirit has moved into it, we hope, today, and it's fully charged. And the other thing is that if you start to suddenly feel a bit seasick halfway through the service, don't worry. I've just got to move the camera to another position so everything might go a bit wobbly for a while. Um, because this morning, folks, we, we're actually going to do something that will probably never, possibly, never be done again. Because under, under the, the COVID restrictions, um, we've just had our a, a annual general meeting, which should have been in, in April, May. Um, we've elected two new church wardens, and normally they would be sworn in by an archdeacon in a big meeting. But this year, they get the second best. <laughs> well, third, really. <laughs> yeah, third, third best, yeah. And they get Trudy doing it. So we're going to, we're going to swear in Ian and Janet as our, our new church wardens um, well, for the next eight months, sort of, um, at the begin towards the beginning of the service. So have, have a, and if you're here for the first time this morning, um, it is a bit different. We're just about working it out, aren't we? We are. We are. We're getting there. But please, don't feel that you've got to be sort of all sort of what this. You can enjoy yourself while you worship, even <laughs> with COVID, uh, as I think I'll try doing in a minute. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Now. As we gather this morning for our Harvest Festival, it's really nice. Sue, the flowers are magnificent. It's really nice to have some flowers back in church, um, which has been a bit difficult. So, Just to those of you that are here and those of you that are home, to remind you that if you've forgotten to bring or you couldn't manage to be with us, um, Janet or I will be here tomorrow morning um, from about half past ten till about twelve o'clock so that you can bring things in then um, and then Sean will be taking them up to the um, food bank later on in the week. So we're here to celebrate harvest, something that we probably find a bit difficult now because unless you've been on holiday recently, when was the last time you saw a, a, a combine harvester or a field? Oh, it was during lockdown while we were out walking. But when we look around us, around us, even in hard times, we know that there's so much to give thanks to God for. And what we're going to do in our, our, our gathering this morning is acknowledge that God is here with us in so many different ways. Now, the rules say that we shouldn't get too excited. But we're going to start our refrain quite low it's quite easy, the, word is, the words are God is here, and each time we get a God is here, just a little bit louder, so that when we get to the final one, we say, God is here, really celebrating God's presence with us here today and in creation as we look around. And don't forget, God is with us in the hard times as well as in the good. Just that sometimes in the hard times we don't look at him quite so much as maybe we should. So as we gather in this place, God is here. Praise him in, the, in this indoors and out. God is here. Walking, running, standing still. God is here. Down the alleys, up the hills, God is here. Praise him, all you flying birds, God is here. Praise him, all you lofty trees, God is here. Praise him, beetles, bugs and bees, God is here. 
Praise him, clouds and sun and rain. God is here. Say it to each other now. God is here. All creation sings God, God's praise. God is here. We join that praise and say, God is here. We gather today around our creator God. We are his handiwork, made for his glory. We gather today in the midst of his creation, his beautiful, awe-inspiring creation. May we hear his invitation today to care for the things he cares about, to delight in the wonders of his world, to join him in renewing creation. We join with all creation to glorify our maker and our God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Right, it's the exciting bit. <laughs> Janet, and, Janet and Ian, would you present yourselves, please? <coughs> Sorry? The sound keeps cutting out on Facebook. That I can't do. It. Uh, that, that. Maybe you need to push the button or something. No, it's all, it's all going. It's all. <laughs> Have we got Zoom? I don't know if that's happening. Maybe you're all <laughs> so each church warden is to say come to that time in the service when we we say sorry and this morning we're going to do it in a slightly different way to what we're used to we're going to make use of Psalm 19 which would include a time when we can think about those things maybe this morning not just what we've done personally but things that we've done as a as a community as a town as a nation our continued sort of misuse of God's creation, bring those things to mind. Um, we don't always have to say things out loud because God knows what's on our hearts. And as part of that then, then Trudy will bring us God's forgiveness. The heavens de declare the glory of God. <clears throat> the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. <clears throat> In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. <clears throat> the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. 
The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honeycomb, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? So we take a moment in quiet to bring into our hearts all those things that we've done wrong, maybe this week, maybe kids, it might be the fact that you've been a bit disobedient this week, parents, it might be that you haven't actually listened to your children. But then we think farther afield, we think of those things that we do that affect the lives of others on this world. Where sometimes our greed means others go hungry. Where our actions put others at risk. Where we ignore the plight of our creation. And so we receive God's forgiveness. who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And now we, we filled our box with good gifts and we now offer those to God. We bring these harvest gifts and give thanks to God. God who has blessed us with abundance, we give thanks for our riches, for the skill and patience of farmers and for your gifts of fertility and growth. We pray that you may plant your word so deep within us that faith may grow to full maturity and our lives bring forth much fruit in good works. Amen. We now have our first reading. The reading this morning is from Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees 
and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. For the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Jesus cleanses ten lepers. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, why were ten not made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God, except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise you, O Christ. So Leslie was going to be preaching today, but um, she's isolating somebody that she's been with has got a very high temperature. So just as a precaution, um, she's isolating. So this morning I printed off her sermon, so I'm reading it cold, so I hope I do it justice. I remember hearing about a vicar in Devon who had his bike stolen. 
He needed his bike to get around his parish, and he knew things like bikes just didn't disappear into thin air. So he put two and two together and thought that someone in the parish, most likely one of those scallywags he told off for throwing stones, had stolen it. So he came up with a plan. He'd preach on the Ten Commandments on Sunday, and when he got to the thou shalt not steal, he'd pause and look around his congregation to see if he'd see a red face and so identify the culprit. He prepared his sermon. Sunday came. He started working his way through the commandments, planning to reach the crescendo at the Eighth Commandment, thou shalt not steal! The only problem was that when he reached the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery, he remembered where he left his bike. (laughs) Having a good memory is an asset. It's not remembering as such that's important, but remembering the things that need to be remembered, like wedding anniversaries or your partner's birthday. Gentlemen, if you forget your wife's birthday, you could say, darling, how do you expect me to remember your birthday when you never look any older? It should work like a charm. Nah. (laughs) The truth is that there are more important things to remember than birthdays and anniversaries. We forget that the life of freedom we enjoy today is a legacy from those who went before us through the blood and suffering of two world wars. We forget that what we owe them, just as we forget them. There are certain people we will never forget. Maybe we never really forget anybody completely. When we lose a loved one, that person becomes less a part of our ongoing lives from the day of the funeral. Yes, years later, we still raise a glass to them and talk fondly of them. But the truth is that over time, we forget. I think God tells us, it's okay, I've got this. Live your life. Is that what what it was like for the lepers? They really wanted to remember, but somehow couldn't because leprosy affects the brain as well as all the other bits. It's hard for us to get inside their heads because it's hard for any of us to imagine what it must have been like to be living with leprosy in those days. Jesus was in no man's land when he met these people, in a place they may not have been on the map, a place where lepers live. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance, they called out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When we come to God, to ask for a miracle, we must come with humility. We mustn't assume for a moment that we deserve the miracle from God because of how good we are. The lepers came to Jesus and knelt before him in absolute humility. We take it for granted that we won't ever come into contact with leprosy. I'm told there are still cases in Australia, mainly amongst Aborigine communities in the Northern Territory, But we know that we're never likely to find lepers living in this country. The disease is not referred to as leprosy anymore, but as Hansen's disease, after Norwegian physician Gerhard Hansen back in 1874. Since then, things have started improving for victims of the disease, and especially after a vaccine was found in 1940. The World Health Organization had set a target for the elimination of leprosy by the year 2000. Unfortunately, there are still about 3 million people suffering from the disease worldwide, and there's about half a million new cases diagnosed each year. Hansen's disease seems to attack those already weakened by illness. It just seems so unfair that people who are already suffering and are self-isolated should be the ones to fall victim to a disease that causes further suffering and further isolation. Hansen's disease is actually one of the least infectious of contagious diseases. The easiest way for the disease to advance is through poor nutrition. And traditionally, the way of treating lepers was to isolate those not very contagious people and leave them to fend for themselves. They quickly became became malnourished 
and so the disease would spread like wildfire. This meant that the move from regular society to the leper colony was a one-way street. So the terrible descent into hell would begin. Your belongings bundled up, none of your family would dare to kiss you goodbye. Your neighbours would shut themselves in as you made your final walk of shame down the street, away from civilization, towards the colony of lepers who would be your companions for the rest of your life. With this disfigured and rejected group, you would seek out a meagre existence as you gradually became more hideous and disfigured until you died a lonely death. None of your family would come to bury you. They might not even know that you died. And they might not want to know, as you were the shame of your family, with the community still wondering what wicked thing you did to deserve such a fate. Leprosy must have been hellish but not for those ten men who found Jesus. These men stood at a distance and called out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus, who was a friend of lepers and who had touched lepers, in, the case, in this case just calls back, go and show yourselves to the priest. Why would he tell them to go and show themselves to the priest? So that the same priest who had declared them unclean might now declare them clean so that they can come back to the community. At the time Jesus tells them to go to the priest, they're not clean. And so he asks them to exercise some faith. Jesus didn't heal these lepers the usual way. They were told to go to the priest instead. They were healed while they were on their way. Faith is trusting and obeying God, even if you don't have any physical evidence supporting your decision. Faith means enduring the test of time. Sometimes God heals instantly, sometimes he takes longer. We must trust God for his word. Peter walked on water. He trusted Jesus for his word. We just need to trust. And it seems that is exactly what the ten did and they walk confidently in the direction of the synagogue. We can only imagine what the people thought when they saw these ragged, dirty, unclean men walking down their street. They must have made a bit of a kerfuffle as they walked towards the synagogue on a street where they were not welcome. And yet, on Jesus' command, these lepers marched confidently towards the town centre, demanding an audience with the priest. It was typical it was a typical Jesus thing to ask of them, that they had to step out in faith in order to receive the gift that he was offering them. And by the time they realised they were healed, Jesus was nowhere to be seen. We don't know at what point in the walk did they realise they were cured. Did they roll up a sleeve and notice the white lumps had gone? Did one of them realise he could feel his feet and his fingers? What we do know is that Jesus wasn't there when it happened, so they couldn't just fall at his feet and thank him. Did Jesus really expect the ten to seek him out and thank him? It appears that he did, but they wanted to see their families and just get on with their lives. After all, these men had a life before leprosy. They could now go back. Perhaps some of them had children they hadn't seen for years. No doubt some of them had been skilled craftsmen in their earlier life, and they could now go back and make a contribution to their communities they had been forced to leave. This healing story reminds us of the wonderful power of Jesus to heal. For me, it's a story about forgetting and remembering. Paul's conversion story is recorded so often in the Bible, I suspect it comes up so often because Paul talks about it so often. Why? So we don't forget it. If our story this morning is anything to go by, perhaps nine out of ten of us do forget the most important people in our lives. And perhaps nine out of ten times we do forget the good things that happen to us all too quickly. For me, 90% of the time, I walk around totally forgetful of how fortunate I am and for all the good things God has done for me. Nine out of ten mornings, I don't wake up giving thanks for my lovely family, my good friends, my good health, 
my spiritual community, or my life in Christ. I forget, and maybe you do too. But do we remember what it was like before we really came to know Christ? Do we remember what it was like before we felt the presence of the Spirit of God in our life, giving us direction and purpose? Do we remember what it was like before God placed us in a spiritual family who don't judge us, but who love us as Christ loves us? Not for what we've accomplished, but simply for who we are. We want to get on with life, but we should move forward with joy. But we must remember, too, to look back in thankfulness. Moving forward in faith, we're looking back in gratitude. That's the picture the gospel gives us. Moving forward in faith while looking back in gratitude, lest we forget. Lest we forget all God has done for us. Lest we forget all that he has given us. Lest we forget all the riches that we have in our lives. Lest we forget. Let's pray. May the Father's hand keep us from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give us confidence to follow. And the fire of the Spirit keep us warm and safe in our walk with God this day. Amen. And we continue in prayer with intercessions written by Elaine. Father God, God of love, maker of heaven, of earth and of all that is, we are gathered together in your name at this harvest time to praise and worship you for every good thing that you have given to us, for our families and friends, for our homes and our jobs, our schools and our health service. I could go on. You are the Lord of the harvest and everything belongs to you and every good gift comes from you. We praise you, Lord, for our beautiful earth and for the good land you have given us, land with all its fields and orchards, gardens and allotments and all they provide us with. We praise you for the changing seasons and the changing weather patterns, which without the crops would fail. We praise you for our seas and our brooks and streams. We praise you for the way you give order to everything, a time and purpose for everything. But Lord, how long will it last if we don't change our ways? Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Father, do you ever turn to your son in despair and say, Oh son, look at them. Will they ever understand? Don't they realise what they are doing? Can they not hear the cries of our creation? How much longer do they think the earth can stand the destruction they are causing, the disruption of our natural process we put in order? Do they not know that they don't, if they don't change their ways, there will soon be no harvest to gather? When will, we, when will they hear? When will they see? When will they ever truly understand? Father of creation, we ask for your forgiveness. But, Father, how many times can we ask you for your forgiveness? How many times can we ask you to forgive our greed and our selfishness, our self-importance, our hardness of heart, before you perhaps no longer want to listen? O oh Lord Jesus, how many times can we ask you for help? Help in changing our ways. Help in improving the environment. Help in knowing what to do to make a difference. Indeed, what is even the point in asking you for your help if you're then going to ignore it? Father, we must all change our ways if we want there to be a decent future here on earth for our children before your return. Lord of forgiveness, hear our prayer. So Lord, as we are now in the season of autumn, 
where all our seeds of hope sown in the spring are gathered in. We give you thanks and ask boldly that you bless our harvest. Harvest that is your provision for us and your blessing for others. It is ours not to keep but to share and it's only through your love and care that we share with others who have little or nothing. Father, bless all the workers, those who till the land and seas, those who toil in the workshops and the factories, those who deliver and share out the harvest. Bless the harvest of those who sow the seeds of the good news of your beloved Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and of those who water and nurture and help them grow. Bless the harvest of those who plant seeds of love and hope throughout this world, especially in the places of war, poverty, dryness and contamination. Bless the harvest of research and invention, of technology and industry, of medicine and treatment. And so we pause to pray for the people who are on our prayer list and for all who the Holy Spirit has brought to mind. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Holy God, three in one, forgive us when we forget to say thank you and help us to remember that all good things around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. May the harvest of love never end. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Before I step down and let Vic take over, I just want to go back to something that was said in Leslie's sermon about the difference between before Christ and after Christ in our lives. And people often think that I've been a Christian all my life. I certainly haven't. I only became a Christian in 2000, only 20 years out of my 55 lives, 55 years of, 55 lives, 55 years of life, only 20 of those years have I been a Christian. So if you want to know the difference, please ask me. I am very happy to tell you. So now, as trusting children, we declare our faith in God, who is all-loving, all-seeing, and all-doing. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap shall clap their hands the peace of the Lord be always with you
as the grain once gathered in the field and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His His spirit spirit is is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is right right to give thanks thanks and and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth, for by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your own image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, Lord, we we believe. believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, we we believe. believe. On the night he gave himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth. Heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Believing and trusting in the promises of God, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now now and forever. forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We are here because Jesus has called us. Strangers and friends, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It's always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table where he meets us. And through him, we who are different are joined to each other. And so in this moment, whether here in church or at home, we ask him to come. Come, Lord Jesus, wherever we are, and fill us with your love, peace, mercy, and grace. Amen. Amen. So in a moment, we're going to receive bread and wine. If it's not your practice, please do come for a blessing. If you come with your arms crossed, I'll know to to bless you. Um, But if you'd rather sit where you are and feel uncomfortable doing that, that's perfectly fine too.
we say together, Lord of all creation, as we have received the bread and wine, fruits of the earth and tokens of salvation, so with joy we celebrate your goodness and commit ourselves to serve you on your earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have you got any notices you want to give out? I don't think so. No, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 